Good morning and God bless you. We're delighted to have you with us here this morning. Perhaps this is your first time tuning in and joining us. We extend a warm welcome to you and trust that you're blessed with what you hear today. We want to begin with prayer. We want to pray for the condition and the direction of our world. We want to remember our local community and region. We also want to remember Cornerstone Pentecostal Church and lastly, our brothers and sisters around the world. Maybe you have a special unspoken request it's a perfect time to make that known unto God. Let's pray together. Father, we love you. We praise you. We worship you. We thank you for the abundance of all things. Father, we pray for great Holy Ghost revival in this day and in this hour throughout the world. Father, we also pray for our local community and region that you'll open up doors of utterance we pray for Cornerstone Pentecostal Church. We pray you'll open up the windows of heaven over this congregation and pour out your virtue and your strength and your favor. And lastly, our brothers and sisters around the world, we pray that you'll furnish them with a hedge of protection. We ask it all in the name above every name, the name of Jesus Christ. Everybody said amen. Two verses of scripture found in the book of Isaiah, chapter number 60. Isaiah, chapter number 60, starting with verse 1. Arise, shine. Now, if you watched um, yesterday's devotional, I quoted a portion of these two verses, but I felt so strongly this morning to talk about verse 2. Arise, shine, for thy light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, this is the reason for that. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness. This is the only place in the entirety of the word of God where this is mentioned. Gross darkness, the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. The darkness shall cover the earth. That's what I want to talk about here. This word darkness is mentioned two times here in this verse. And I believe that we are, what we are seeing here is a spiritual darkness. Spiritual darkness shall cover the earth. Um, this is obviously an end time scenario. Um, some would posit that this is specifically for the Jews. This is an end time prophecy for the Jews, but I want to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that spiritual darkness is in the earth today. And then there is another form of darkness that is far more personally subjective, and that is where it says gross darkness. So you have um, spiritual darkness covers the earth. But then gross darkness, this is a, an experiential darkness. It's not just spiritual darkness, but now this is a darkness that is because we're made in the image of God and we're made with certain particular faculties of not just the physical man with the five senses, but the soul has the ability, it has sensations, it has a sensory ability and even people that are lost are going to be able, there's a tangibility to this. There is a discernibility to this. Gross darkness, the people. And I believe that this gross darkness, if you, if you had to, if you had to come up with a description of what this, what this darkness felt like, I believe that it would be something like abject hopelessness. 
hopelessness. Um, and you and I, as being made in the image of God, we were not created, or let me, let me rephrase that. I don't believe we were ever created to feel hopelessness. I don't believe we were, when God created Adam and Eve, I don't believe that he created them with, all right, hopelessness is going to be part of their, their sensory experience. I don't believe that. I believe that that is part of the fall. I think that we would all agree with that. However, in this particular description of where the human race is, I believe that this gross darkness is hopelessness, depression, um, a feeling of uselessness. It is, it is absolutely foreign to the human makeup. It is absolutely, um, it was never intended by God. And it is absolutely horrific where the human race is at this part in Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 and 2. I remember years ago, just as a new convert, I had no money. I uh, was just coming through um, several months of hepatitis type B, hepatitis type B. There were some incredible saints of God, and I want to get a, sh a shout out to the saints of God that, that were there in the Rock Church at that time were used of God. It was, it was an incredible experience to be in that congregation. Um, it, was, it was the real deal. And there were people that came and stepped up alongside and said, we will help this man. Um, it was the love of God in action. There was a brother that was there that uh, lived in a small apartment and he said, you know what, I've got a couch here. I'm hardly ever here because I'm, I'm working and I'm here and I'm there. Um, he's welcome, you're welcome to just come. And I was just, I was living out of boxes. I didn't have any luggage. I was living out of cardboard boxes. And he said, you're welcome to just stay on my couch. Just, there's a couch, there's a kitchen, there's nothing in the fridge except months old hot dogs that are turning colors. You don't want to eat those. But um, you get the picture. There's a bathroom there, there's a kitchen here, and there's a couch there. So I remember one night I was laying on this couch, and um, I was about to doze off to sleep. And all of a sudden, I felt a presence that was unlike anything I had ever felt in my 30 years of existence, and I'd felt a lot of things. I mean, I was definitely um, controlled by spirits. I don't know if you would say I was possessed, but I think I was pretty close to it. I was definitely motivated and controlled to do horrific things uh, to myself and to others. And so I'm laying here. I've been baptized in Jesus' name filled with the Holy Ghost, and I feel a sensation of fear and hopelessness like I have never felt before. And it was just like I was, I, it was like that I was captivated by that, that sensation of absolute, pure, unadulterated fear and hopelessness. And I really believe that it was the presence of Satan had come into that room. Um, much like Matthew chapter number 12, when an unclean spirit is gone out of a man, that he, he cometh back with seven more uh, to check on the condition of that individual. And I was laying there and I was frozen and all I could do is just say the name of Jesus, 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 in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. I praise you, I worship you, I praise you, I worship you. And after many, many, many moments, 
it left. It left. But I will never forget, I will never forget that absolute paralyzing, paralyzing sensation of fear and hopelessness that came back to my life. Uh, several years ago, there was an individual that came uh, to our congregation that I had actually met uh, in a revival somewhere else. They were just a member of another congregation, but they had family here, so they moved here and came to um, our church for a short time. And seemingly out of nowhere, I get a phone call that this individual um, had been admitted and was in the psychiatric wing of Sacred Heart Hospital. And so I went to visit this individual and I, in visiting with them and, and, and dialoguing, you know, what are you doing here? What da, 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 da. It became apparent to me that this individual was experiencing absolute, total hopelessness. At one time, a saint of God. I quoted scripture. I tried to encourage. I did everything I could to reach with this person with the promises of the Word of God that are uh, uh, immovable foundation for the church of the living God. But there had been something that had happened in this individual's life that had stripped them of their hope, stripped them of their faith, stripped them of their joy. I, I really believe that when people get to the place of experiencing gross darkness, that it affects their mental health. I've seen it. I have come in contact with people that I believe that it absolutely begins to affect their mentality, their stability uh, as a human being. We were never designed for that. What is the answer for this? This is the answer for gross darkness and people that, that um, they're watching uh, America that was once the land of the free, and I'm not, I, am a, I am a patriot, understand this, I am a patriot. But I wanna tell you, I wanna tell you that the America that I grew up with is gone. It is rapidly evaporating and changing before our eyes, and there are people that I believe that this type of, this type of spiritual, oblique darkness and no hope and uh, the only Christianity they've ever seen has been Catholicism or some wishy-washy non-denominationalism that has no power, that has no divine interaction, that has no demonstration. That's all they know. So they feel hopeless. I want to tell you, the real thing is here. And I want to tell you, our answer is hope. Everybody said hope. Hope is our answer to fight gross darkness. Human beings were made for hope. Or hope was made for human beings. And I want to tell you, hope works. And hope maketh not ashamed. And the power of the Holy Ghost that is able to extricate, deliver, bring people out, shatter their prison houses. Many of the people that are in what we would call spiritual prisons are prisons that are built by the debris of their own failures. They need hope. It says in the book of Isaiah, chapter number 14, that Satan will not open the prison houses of his prisoners, but God will. And you and I carry the hope of this world. I want to tell you, it's our hour, it's our day. You will never convince me that this is not the greatest day of the church of the living God. You have to have hope. Because hope, people are drawn to hope. It's like striking a match in an absolute dark room. They will be drawn to it. That's why yesterday I talked about let your light so shine before men. You can feel this darkness creeping in. It's not hopelessness to us. If you have the baptism of the Holy Ghost, if you have 
a prayer life, it's time to get a prayer life. It's time to stay full of the Holy Ghost. It's time to know the Word of God. It's time to get a hold of this thing and, and, and allow it to permeate into your life, into your heart, into your mind, into your soul, into your strength, so that it can reverberate out in a world that is beginning to feel the sensations of gross darkness. We have the answer. It's time for great revival. God bless you. Thank you for joining us here this morning. We'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning in Jesus' name.